disorders are prevalent across the lifespan and are the most commonly diagnosed psychiatric disorder among children and adolescents. Today we're going to review a case study of an 11-year-old girl named Lydia who presents with problems being separated from her mother. But first, we're going to take a look at the different presentations of anxiety among children and adolescents. Separation anxiety disorder is more commonly diagnosed among female children and is characterized by age-inappropriate anxiety about being separated from a caregiver. The core feature is a fear of something threatening happening to self or caretaker during separation, such as being kidnapped or murdered. Generalized anxiety disorder is more common among adolescents and the gender differences among diagnoses still remains unknown. It is characterized by excessive and uncontrollable worry and associated feelings of tension or restlessness. Social phobias are more common among adolescents and gender norms are still unknown. It is characterized by excessive and disabling fear of social or evaluative situations involving peers. Anxiety typically presents itself through behaviors such as panic, tantrums, crying, freezing, or shrinking from view. Specific phobias are equally found among male and female children and adolescents. It is characterized by excessive and disabling fear of a specific object or situation. These phobias are organized into specific categories, including animal, natural and environmental, situational, and blood injury injection. Panic disorder is slightly more common in female adolescents. It is characterized by sudden feelings of intense fear that can seem to come from out of the blue, causing panic attacks. So now that we have an overview of the different types of anxiety disorders among children and adolescents, let's take a look at Lydia's case. Thank you for coming in. I wanted to meet with you after our last appointment with Lydia because I noticed her behavior was a little out of the ordinary um, when you had to step out of the room. Have you noticed any changes in Lydia lately? Yeah, um, thank you for bringing me in. Um, she has been um, having a lot of behavioral issues. Um, getting her on the bus and on the school bus in the morning is a battle every morning. She's been throwing a lot of temper tantrums every time she has to get on the bus, which is really frustrating because she's 11 years old and I don't feel like this should be happening. Um, I'm getting a lot of calls from her school nurse uh, telling me that she has headaches and that I need to come get her because she's crying and, and asking for me and this is happening, you know, four times a week and it's really hard because I work full time and so this is a difficult burden on our family um, for me to go leave work and pick her up and the frustrating thing is that when she's with me everything's fine she doesn't seem to be having these headaches or throwing temper tantrums it's just kind of when we're apart um, yeah I'm sorry to hear that it sounds really difficult um, it sounds to me like she may be experiencing some anxiety would you be interested maybe in talking with a psychologist to help you and Lydia through this yeah I'd be open to that Great, so there's a website that you can go to to find providers that specialize in childhood anxiety and to provide you with evidence-based treatments. Um, if you'd like, we could take a look at that together real quick and so that you could be a little more familiar with it. Yeah, for sure, I'd be open to doing that. Okay, great. Okay, so here is the website I was referring to, effectivechildtherapy.org. If we go over here to Concerns, Symptoms, and Disorders, it lists those out for us. So it sounds to me like she's expressing a lot of fear, worry, and distress. So we'll just go down to that, list that out, and describe that further for us here. Um, if we click on anxiety, uh, we can read about the different presentations of anxiety in children and see what treatments are recommended. Uh, if we go up here to the top to tips and tools, we can also click here and locate psychologists within our community. Great, this is a really great tool. Thank you for showing me this. Um, <laughs> so when I do find a psychologist that I'm interested in, I contact them, what are some good questions that I should be asking as far as treatment goes? Right, that's a really great question. So this website does list for you um, some frequently asked questions relating to child therapy. Um, if those aren't answered for you, if you'd just like to know a little more, you may ask them really what's ever on your mind um, in regards to treatment, um, costs of treatment, evidence behind the treatment they're suggesting. It may also be good to ask them what to expect during treatment. Um, how long their treatment is going to last. Mm -hmm. It's also going to be really important for you to have an understanding of your own involvement in Lydia's treatment, especially considering that she is a child. What other questions do you have for me before you go find a provider? Um, I don't think I have any right now. I really appreciate you bringing me in here and showing mm -hmm. me these tools and also I, I think I thought a lot of this was in my head so right. it's nice to know that it's not um, and that I can seek care for it. So. 
um, and for Lydia. So I'm definitely going to take a look at this website tonight and hopefully contact some providers um, and try to get an appointment for us. So thank Ooh. you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. After speaking with my case manager, I went online and explored options for evidence-based treatments in the area. I made an appointment to talk with a provider who specializes in evidence-based treatments for children with anxiety. I'm hoping to get more information about how this can help Lydia and what role I play as her mom in treatment. I've been increasingly concerned about her behavior, and I can't keep leaving work to get her from school when her teachers call me. Even when she's at home with her sister, she tends to cry and tantrum until I return. While I'm gone, she'll even call me three to four times to ask if I'm okay and always sounds extremely distressed. When I ask her what's wrong, she tells me she's scared I'm going to be hurt or even killed. I try to reassure her that I'll be okay and that I'll be right back when running errands, but this doesn't seem to help. I'm unsure what to do and I hope the psychologist can help alleviate some of Lydia's worries. So now that we talked a little bit about Lydia's symptoms, I would like to talk to you a little bit more about what I think might be happening with Lydia. Okay. So it sounds like she's experiencing a lot of anxiety when she's apart from you, and this can commonly be diagnosed as separation anxiety disorder, which is very common among girls her age. So there's different treatment options that would be effective for her, but I think one in particular might be most effective if you're willing to be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, I think it might be important for me to be a part of it since her anxiety seems to be involving me in some right. way. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So what I was thinking is that we would do a treatment called modular cognitive behavioral therapy and this is shown to be very effective especially when the parent is involved. Okay, yeah, I, I definitely want to hear more about that and what's involved in the treatment. Okay, that sounds great. So let's talk about the treatment a little bit. One thing I want to emphasize is that this treatment is really unique because it's personalized to Lydia's wants and needs within treatment. Oh wow, yeah, I think she'd like to be involved. In, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so she'll have some control and that will determine, her progress will determine the amount of sessions we have, the frequency sessions we have, that will all be determined on her wants and her needs. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. And then another unique thing with this treatment is that the involvement with the parent can be very variable. And it sounds like you want to be involved, which is great and will benefit Lydia within treatment. Yeah, I definitely want to be involved, and if, at, at least if she wants me there, too. Great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And we can talk about what that will look like later as okay. well. So another thing I wanted to mention about this treatment is that it doesn't always have to be here in the clinic. We can go outside. We can go do it in the home. It's variable with what Lydia is learning at that time. Yeah, I would be open to y'all coming to the home or you coming to the home if that's something that would benefit where we're at in treatment with Lydia. Great, and we can definitely talk about that as those sessions approach as well. Okay, and speaking of sessions, what's typically involved in, in each session? Like, What do you do with her or with us? That's a great question, and that's why I brought the manual list. So if you're interested, we can go through this and take a look at some of the highlights of the treatment. Oh yeah, I definitely am interested in looking through. Okay. So as you can see here, this is a typical flow chart for modular cognitive behavioral therapy treatment, the treatment that we'll be completing with Lydia. So the techniques that we'll focus on will be tailored to Lydia's needs and we will not move on from a certain skill until it is mastered, so the pace of the treatment is determined by her progress. Another important component of this treatment is exposure to reduce the fears Lydia is experiencing. So if we look at this page right here, this will kind of talk about that. So we'll start with something small, so maybe like you saying goodbye in preparation to leave until that's no longer scary for Lydia. We'll then move up in what we call her fear ladder to another situation that is scary for Lydia until she is eventually able to be alone without fear near death or being separate from you. While this treatment is extremely flexible and the length and order of modules are dependent on the child's wants and needs, the different modules include creating a fear ladder, teaching the child and family about anxiety, practicing in-session exposures both in vivo and imaginal, going over maintenance and relapse prevention, working on cognitive restructuring and social skills, and finally assignments for parent involvement. So now that we have an overview, let's get back to Lydia's fear ladder. Okay, so like for here, um, if we were going to start with um, saying goodbye, mm -hmm. we would write that in this first Right, yep, bracket, that would be the first then, part. And then she would rate her fear from 0 to 10. Yes, exactly. Um, and we would just keep with that fear until it got down right. to a manageable level. And then, so our ultimate goal would be maybe her staying at home by herself. Exactly. Without yep. Without feeling. Yeah. Without yeah. fearing that anxiety. And 
And so it's important to note that Lydia plays a, a major role in determining what steps will go on her fear ladder. So she has to be able to identify those as well. Okay, great. So is there anything that I need to be doing uh, within treatment besides just being there for Lydia? That's a great question. So this treatment will benefit from your involvement inside of session as well as outside of session with Lydia. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that we schedule sessions together without Lydia so that we can talk about some techniques such as rewarding and ignoring her unwanted behaviors at home. So when doing that, I'm also going to give you a observation record which you'll record your responses to her unwanted behavior. So for example, this is what the parent observation record will look like so you'll just make sure that you're marking the behaviors what you how you responded to Lydia and then whether or not that worked okay and then another example that I'd like to show you is just a handout so I know we had talked about rewarding and ignoring her behavior so mm -hmm. this is something that I would give you at that time that you can make sure that you're implementing with Lydia outside of our sessions yeah I think these tools will be really helpful in helping me understand how to better help her outside of sessions absolutely and and building off of that, we'll also do some role-playing, role playing, you and I, so okay. that you can practice those skills with Lydia at home. Oh, that's awesome. And so, as far as treatment goes, um, how do we know when to end? How do we know if it's, I guess, working for Lydia and if she's making progress? Well, considering what you've told me about Lydia's symptoms, I think a good goal would be for her to be able to stay at home alone a full day or even at school a full day without experiencing headaches and having tantrums and extreme distress. But okay. that will be something that Lydia and I will have to decide together, and once we reach that goal, then we'll determine that treatment can be completed. Okay. Wow, this is all great information. I, I think I'd love to go ahead and schedule an, an appointment with, with Lydia to be here, and hopefully next week, so we can kind of try to tackle her anxiety. That's a great idea. If you want to follow me to the other room, we can get that scheduled right away. Okay, yeah.